Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being the show, we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Sprung, a great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, I actually completely forgot that the premise behind this was like, I knew, like, oh yeah, like these. Uh, people got out of prison and, like, move in with, like, Rooster's mom. I knew about that element of it and stuff. But I didn't realize, like, oh, I I'd actually, because it's been a while since I saw the trailer, so I'd actually forgotten that the COVID was the reason why they got released. It's, like, releasing non, like, violent criminals and stuff like that. I was like, actually, I was like, did they do that? They actually did that in real life, didn't they? I was like, actually, it feels so weird because obviously a lot of the, past couple years has been a blur for a lot of people, but I was like, oh yeah, I, I feel like I heard talks about that, but I mean, I also don't watch the news enough, so like, I didn't, rem I didn't remember that thing, like, I think that was a thing that actually happened in real life, once again, I could be just blurring so much stuff together in my head, but either way, they ended up getting released, and obviously, this is like, they even said like spring 2020, so this is probably like, definitely still like March of 2020, and no one has anywhere to go. Uh, because it's like, yeah, we've been locked up, so we kind of have no home to go back to. Especially in Jack's case, who Jack is played by uh, Garrett Dillahunt. Um, obviously, because uh, I, I do correct me in the comments down below. I think the person who made this show is also the person who made Raising Hope, isn't it? But maybe not, because obviously the actress who plays Barb, like both of them were in, um, in Raising Hope together. Um, but also, uh, the thing I best known for is uh, John Dory uh, Jr. from uh, the uh, Fear the Walking Dead. So, either way, putting all that aside, uh, he's been in prison for 26 years apparently for selling weed. I even love when like he meets up with Barb, and Barb's like taking a second. You see her mouth moving, and she's kind of like darting her eyes back. I was like, "Are you trying to?" And she's like, "26 years." I was like, "Okay, you were doing the math in your head like that." Um, yeah, because, like, he had nowhere else to go, and Rooster was like, yo, man, like, you know, you ignored all my stories, but, which I love this line from Jack, where he's like, well, you've been in as long as I have, you hear people's stories all the time, it's like, that line of dialogue seems so insignificant at the time, but now it ends up coming full circle and meaning so much by the end of the episode, we'll get to that later, but, uh, I also love that he was in the line for the payphone, and he heard, like, Gloria, uh, uh, uh talk about, like, yeah, like, this. I have a boyfriend on the inside, but, I mean, he's, well, I mean, there's no guarantee he's actually going to get out, and you see Jack kind of lean out, because she's like, yeah, all I ever saw was his penis, which she, because he has a girlfriend who he's talking through, through the toilet with, um, she's like, oh, yeah, you have a handsome dick, um, and at first, I thought, like, he wasn't going to say anything, because she was saying, like, all right, it's not even serious, like, he's probably not even going to get out, so... But uh, Rooster ends up inviting Gloria to his, their house, and it's like, she's like, oh, hi. And it's like, what's your name? Well, do you, oh, you guys are like, they're like, do you know my a boyfriend named Jack? And they're like, oh, his name is Jack. And Jack's kind of like, no, no. And she's like, no, it's a different Jack. This Jack is like 6'2", he's ripped, 28-year-old, who's a cross between The Rock and Alex Rodriguez. Like, I remember hearing this guy say that through the toilet, and then Gloria just kind of turns to him looking so pissed, and Jack's like, I'm sorry. Which is, poor guy, it's like, right, we were just always going to talk through the toilet, but it's like, yeah, no relationship should ever be built on the foundation of a lie, but we find out kind of what everyone ended up getting locked up for, Jack, obviously, about the weed situation, um, uh, but Gloria was like, what, wire fraud and identity theft type of stuff, and Rooster stole an ice cream truck. Seems like Rooster's been in and out of trouble, because I think his mom said, like, oh yeah, like, he's never redecorated his room, because he's never been home long enough, bouncing between actually going to juvie all the time and literally going to prison, like, he hasn't been home enough, you know, and he's like, oh, where's my door of the Explorer sheets? It's like, curtains, it's like, well, baby, I told you about the toilet paper situation, because she had to throw out, she's like a good oven mitt. And I, I love that whole, like, Almost borderline goats riding the whip, uh, when she, like, sneaks out the car, just, like, grabs, snatches up people's packages. I was like, that's super messed up. Uh, but I guess that's always just kind of been their thing. I mean, obviously, it has to be, considering the fact is that they're just, like, it's just kind of like, hey, like, let's do this thing just without even skipping a beat. They're just, like, checking out the neighborhood and just strike and bounce. Um, they end up buying toilet paper from Melvin, which I love that it's like, oh yeah, like prices had to go up because his supply got his supplier got fired. It's like, oh, how is your mom? She's good, looking for work, and on. Ah, okay. 
Um, Because you almost, it does feel so weird uh, to be like, man, that was a thing. It feels like, maybe maybe because like so much of the past few years, two years have been such a blur that you kind of forget like, oh man, that was a thing, wasn't it? Where it's like, yeah, people were just buying up toilet paper like crazy and you couldn't really find any because people were just buying it in such large bulk. Um, Because this is the first show I've watched, or first thing I've watched that's been COVID specific. Like, what I mean is, like, that the story's kind of built around COVID. Like, I've watched maybe, like, one... Like, I know some shows obviously included, like, COVID-related stuff, but I want to say, like, um, actively using it as a part of the story, this is the first thing I've seen. I know it's not the only thing that's been made that centers around that, but it's, like, it's the one thing I've watched that's kind of centered around that. And obviously, like, that's just kind of a... um, God, what would be the word? Just the backdrop it's kind of the uh, set piece for the story but the story is just like right then i mean it's because of covid it kind of allows them to have this opportunity i mean they probably would have had these opportunities otherwise but this kind of plays a role i mean it's why they got out of prison early in the first place because i think when jack still had like what four more years or something like that on his sentence or something like that it is sad to hear about Rooster's dad that he died trying to adjust the antenna when it was like raining or whatever because he was trying to watch Blue Bloods. It ended up breaking his neck. Um, also, the fact is he has a twin brother who's like in Mexico and it's like probably like connected to like the cartel or something. Most like, and she's so like okay with being like, yeah, there's a good chance he's probably not coming back. It seems like you're not that hurt about it. Uh, I would almost, it almost seems like Rooster would be your favorite, but I guess it's just like, hey, that's just the way this family rolls. I'm, it makes you almost think, like, the fact is they introduced that concept, it's not just the gag of like, oh yeah, like the drywall to keep them from killing each other, so, uh, Jack and Gloria live, like, on the other side of each other, on the other side of that wall. Um, it's probably gonna be a thing of like, no, like, he's gonna probably, like, uh, Rooster's twin brother will probably pop up at some point in time. Um. And what that kind of entails necessarily, we'll have to wait and see. If they, it just feels like because they set that up, there, it just feels like something that's ultimately going to end up paying off in the long run. I also love the whole situation where we also found out that the dick picture that Jack sent Gloria isn't even his. It's um, it's like, oh, why'd you why'd you take a picture of my dick? He's like, I thought you you said this was for your sister, and he's like, mine is camera shy. Um, and I love that. Uh, Barb keeps constantly throwing it in Gloria's face, being like, oh, like, you know, because she's like, oh, I kind of want grandchildren. So it's like, she's like, I have, like, no interest in your son, and just, like, Barb just constantly throwing it. It's like, oh, why'd you put it under my pillow? And then, like, the whole wallet situation later on, just to put it in her face again, just because Barb loves her reaction. I also love that line of her basically being like, right, uh, basically, like, I sleep in here, don't come, like, knocking and, like, trying to slip a cock in or something. Jack's almost like, wait, what? Why'd you even assume that? But she's like, ah, you might want to be careful, too, like, because, you know, I can handle a little bit of my, you know, box Chardonnay, and sometimes I get lonely, and she's basically like, when the culmination of all that kind of happens, I can get a little grabby, so you might want to put up a bit of a fight. It's like, Jesus, Barb. Then there's a the whole situation with, um, obviously watching news, which once again, you're just kind of like, yeah, uh, it's kind of like representative of like, oh, not really. Obviously, that was still early days where no one knew because even Rooster made that joke. Where he's like, yo, I ain't worried about it. Like, I ain't going to worry about no virus or whatever because I'm not going to eat a bat, you know. Obviously, that's Rooster being Rooster, but the fact is that this, you even look at the news, it's still kind of like a, it's a time capsule to be like, oh yeah, like at the time, like, general public, we as a whole didn't really know too much. So I know, just real quick question, did anyone else get a Pfizer ad? I was like, oh, because I don't think I've ever seen an actual Pfizer ad. I've heard like general, like, oh, get your vaccines ads in the past, but like, I've never seen an actual Pfizer or Moderna ad and until now, this is like the first one. I, I know it's weird to say, but like I, I see plenty of ads on a daily basis watching YouTube and stuff. I've never seen specifically a Pfizer ad. That was kind of wild to me, especially because it's like, oh, like did they specifically? That had to be specifically because of this show. But uh, maybe I'm reading too much into that. Maybe it just happened to be coincidence. You feel like it wouldn't be, but either way, it feels that had to be like 100 percent on purpose. I even love that there was a line from Barb circling back saying like, oh, they like, do you need a mask? And she's like, yeah, it just depends on who you're watching. You're like, oh, that's, 
I mean, that is that if that comment isn't true for like a lot of stuff. It doesn't just go goes beyond the COVID situation. But I even love like she ended up finding like a a mask from a construction site. It's even got a little hole in it that she uses to smoke through. Um, but out of anyone in the show, I love that Jack is the one that's the most concerned about it. Like, literally no one else gives as much of a shit until he does. Like, because he's the one kind of worried about it. Like, oh, maybe you should be worried. But Glory's like, oh, they're just trying to fear monger you. They're trying to, like, scare you. It's like, yeah, they're going to hit you with some sad news, and then they're going to hit you with some happy news. That's how they, like, manipulate you. And then they told that story of that mother who hasn't, you know, who's a nurse, who hasn't seen her children, has to be separated from them sleeping in her car just so she doesn't give them the virus. And it's like, Jack starts crying. Glory's like, are you crying? He's like, yes. Like, why aren't you crying, you know? He's like, this is supposed to make me happy and it ended up being a sad story. It's like, eh, that's kind of the news sometimes, too, where it's just like, oh, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's heart, well, it's not I mean, even heartwarming. It's a very heartbreaking story, but also it's just like, yeah, the news kind of has a tendency, like, sad story, sad story. Uplifting story, sad story, sad story. It almost makes you go, like, I want to watch the news, you know? Either way. And ultimately, we get introduced to Barb's whole thing of, like, cool, we're a crime family, so we're going to go commit some crime, which Jack is the only, like, everyone was on board with it. Obviously, Rooster's like, yeah, we've kind of been doing this for a while, so it's not that wild of a thing, but Gloria, like, immediately jumped on the opportunity, like, all right, let's do this, because they were going to rob Melvin, um... But Jack was kind of like, no, I went to jail. You know, I'm not the violent type. I'm not, I've never stolen anything. Like, I went to jail for selling weed. Like, I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to steal from anybody. Especially with everything going on. It's like, yeah, everyone's kind of going through their struggles. But she's like, dude, life is difficult regardless of any circumstances. Now or anywhere else. You know, everyone's got to look out for themselves. But he's just kind of like, no, I don't want anything to do with that. She's like, cool, cool. Then you can't stay here. You need to kind of uh, pull your weight. So he ends up leaving like she wouldn't even give let him like take some sips of water before he left either it's like no 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 the, the the water and food here are for people who are staying who are participating in the crime so he left you know struggling to pick up a dollar bill off the ground just so he could you know, like um end up going to a vending machine which i'm like i've not been to a vending machine in forever i'm like like legitimately like the fact is he couldn't even get like, it's like, get the uh, fruit strips that he wanted because, um, the fruit strip gum or whatever he wanted because it was a dollar fifty and all he had was a dollar. And, like, having to, like, go about that, like, you know, um, trying to get that guy nearby. He's like, oh, can you, like, put this in for me? He's like, does that dollar bill have the virus on it? He's like, I don't know. It's like, oh, I'll take my chances and not help you out. And did all that, all he was able to get were, um, Kind of like some mint candy or something like that. Um, just not what he wanted. And ended up dumping most of them except for the one piece. And he puts it in his mouth and it's like, well, at least there's that. And the guy's like, you do realize that there's so much you touch without your shirt. The fact is you touch that candy's wrapping and you touch that candy itself. And then he just immediately spits out and the guy laughs at him. It's like, oh, come on, man. He already, he's already down on his luck. So he goes back. He's like, fine. You guys have this plan and you're going to try and rob Melvin. It's not going to work. And I love that we find out like, okay, so the reason why he's this sudden like criminal expert. I'm like, wait, I thought all you did was like, are we going to find out you didn't just sell weed? And, uh, you know, it's like, no, he's basically over the 26 years he's been in prison. He's basically picked up criminal skills from everyone he's in because he's like not he never actively asked anyone for advice. People just told him their stories about how they got caught. I love that one guy being like, he's like, and he's like oh, so is that how you got caught stealing? He's like, oh, no, I never got caught stealing. I strangled my brother when I found out he was banging my husband. It's like, OK, yeah, that would uh, put you there, put you here. Um. I mean, that is that crazy thing of just, I mean, I, they get, you know, it's just almost like, right, you have a whole other life, and then, like, it's something else that gets you caught. It's almost like the Al Capone thing of, like, right, after everything you've done, being the mobster you are, what was your undoing? Tax evasion. I mean, granted, like, obviously, like, tax evasion versus, like, I know I strangled my brother. Uh, I wonder, um, I don't know if he killed his brother in the process. It, obviously, that's going down to darker route, because it's meant to be a little dark humory, but still makes you go, like, that's... I mean, he, you know, so, either way, put, putting all that aside, what I was about to say is, I forgot Joey Diaz was going to be in this, because uh, he's in a trailer, like the scene he's in, 
maybe it's a one-off thing, but I'm wondering will we get more from these criminals, like all the like tactics he learned from everybody. And these are just a few people. I mean, he's been in prison for 26 years, so he's probably picked up a lot. Which I think maybe that speaks volumes about who Jack is, that like so many people were so comfortable like talking to him about everything. But like I said it, uh, earlier, it kind of brings the whole conversation back forward where he was like, yeah, like he didn't want to listen to Rooster's stories because it's like, right, you won't believe like how all the times like I had to listen to people's stories. And it's like, oh, now we get it because all the like cellmates he had over the years and stuff like that, they rambled on and on. And now it's like all that stuff stuff comes back full circle because now you can utilize it so i love that guy being like oh yeah like the ring doorbell things kind of screwed him over so he ended up being like yo so you have to start going through the window he's like that's why you have to work on your caps and he's like all right come on one more so yeah even though you had no intentions of using any of this these people still will, like put you through the ringer like giving you all this information and letting you know how to hotwire a car and stuff like that the whole camera set up so that you can watch someone put their pin in, obviously watching them, so you can understand their habits of where they go, what do they do at night, and when do they finally go to sleep. Also, there is a little complication in all of this when they're trying to rob Melvin. It turns out Rooster's ex-girlfriend is there, and so you can tell that's going to be an issue later on because Rooster's keeping an eye on them because he misses her, but also... Um, they set up this whole thing so that Melvin wouldn't ask too many questions because they made it seem like, what was it, um, Grab Hubby? Is that the name of it? And he thinks, like, oh, my God, like, we ordered, like, some, maybe some, like, some male escorts or something. And it's just kind of like, right, rather kind of forget about the, like, oh, you can't remember anything? It's like, good, we'll pretend like none of this happened. That's because as long as no one reports a crime, there is no crime. So because of that, he thinks, like, he did all this. So it's like, no, 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 I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to look into this too much. I'm not going to report like because uh, I he gets only assuming that he got drunk and did something, especially because he found the picture of Rooster's penis beside um, Rooster's egg. Is, obviously, it was part of like the setup and stuff that kind of like sell the story of like the um, Grub Hubby. But I that's where I kind of go like that's probably going to be an issue because if she ever sees that picture, she's going to be like, hey, I know who. Oh my God! That why do you have a picture of Rooster's penis? And he, Melvin's gonna be like, "Wait, what?" It's like, "Yeah, that's Rooster's penis," and they're gonna probably know like this whole thing's. Just, he's probably gonna find out that way. He, she, Barb did steal some toilet paper from him too, but she's like, "Yeah, it's kind of from the back," so like he won't even notice it's gone. So he'll probably eventually find out that he got hit by um, Barb and them. So yeah, they were both chloroformed, but. Still, like, he might start piecing that together. And then once he starts actively looking to the crime, that'll probably be an issue. Just Because you know, they're like, yeah, because as long as no one reports a crime, like, your fingerprints being everywhere won't even be that much of an issue because no one's going to be looking for you because no one knows a crime's been committed. So, well, we'll see how that works out. But I just feel like because of the complication, of, especially because Rooster's keeping an eye on because I think he's going to try and win her back. But it's like, probably shouldn't get too close to one of your, one of your marks. Um... Like, you know, and because that leaves you open and vulnerable to being found out for the crime you committed against him. So, like I said, we'll, we'll see. But I just get the feeling like that's going to be set up for that. Uh, Barb's got her whole situation of, like, she stopped piling money, saving up money so she can get Botox because she wants to meet her beau. Because um, she's like, yeah, the, the guy that she's with right now, they've only kind of talked through email. And you're like, she's probably getting catfished, isn't she? I mean, it'd be very... Not the fitting, but it's just like, right, the whole Gloria and Jack thing of like, yeah, he didn't know, uh, she didn't know what he looked like and everything, and he lied about all that stuff. It's like, yeah, you probably don't even have a dragon tattoo on your back. He's like, well, I have a dragonfly on my thigh, but still. And um, Gloria, she was looking into something. There was someone she, I, I don't know what that was about, but it's like someone had... I think it was someone uh, on the, like, stock market or whatever, like, knew or was being accused of knowing ahead of time about the pandemic, like, hap going to be happening. So they, like, it was, like, insider trading is what this person was getting accused of. And the fact is that Gloria's taking such an interest in it makes me think it had to be someone that she knew or from her past or whatever. I mean, once again, she is getting in trouble with wire fraud, so maybe there's some kind of connection on that front. And uh, Jack hasn't, obviously we haven't spent enough time with the characters, this is only the first episode, but Jack hasn't brought up anything about any family or anything about when he was locked up. 
No, he did talk. I forgot. He did when he him and Rooster were talking at the beginning. He said like, right, him and his parents haven't talked in a while so that's why he's like that's why he couldn't find them because like he couldn't remember their numbers to call them and he talked to someone from uh if it was from a store or whatever what's a guy named tony he's like oh no the guy seemed pretty nice and actually funny so i'm like i'm once again kind of lending itself to like just um jack's personality as a whole but either way um I was curious, like, what he was up to, and it turns out he took some of those, uh... They were, like, some, I, almost, like, I, not some tablets or whatever, uh, five or six t uh, tablets or something, uh, and get it, get, ended up giving it to the nurse and her family. Because when he was dropped, like, initially going there, we see, like, an older lady and a kid or whatever, I was thinking, like, I thought this was, like, family of his. It's like, no, it's, it's the nurse's family, which is actually really sweet, and I love that, um... Uh, Barb's watching it. She's like, oh, that's damn cute. Rooster, I love you. Rooster's like, what? I love you. I love you too. You know? And um, Jack going out back and just uh, chewing on his fruit strip gum and just staring at the stars being one of the things he wanted. Those are that and like walking through like barefoot through the grass or the three things like he wanted to do um, you know, upon getting out. So uh, it was this really nice like Ah, like, moment at the end there, so... I'm curious if that whole him jumping on the trampoline, is is the ending credit sequence going to be different every episode, or is that just going to be the ending credit sequence? Either way, it's just kind of nice seeing him just, like, happy with everything, you know? So, everyone got paid, they got away with the crime. Um, like, a very nice introduction to the show. I'm very interested to continue. Obviously, there's another episode already out. Um, I'm wondering, are they going to do, uh, the whole two episodes a week thing, just like, uh, Bosch Legacy was, so, we'll ultimately have to wait and see, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the show, and I'm excited to see what ends up happening in the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.